Hey everyone, Veronica here. Welcome back to part two of getting ahead when you're feeling behind. I don't remember what I called it in part one, but uh, basically what's happening on my counter in my kitchen here right now, if you're just joining, is this is more or less my greenhouse propagation space for the season. And I'm just kind of working through all of the things that need to get done prior to spring's arrival that do not involve starting annual seeds because it is way too early for me to do that here. So part one was all about what I'm doing with bulbs and bare roots that have not made it out into the ground yet just to triage those situations. Part two is the streamlined process for starting plants, fruit trees, native uh, shrubs and bushes and trees from cuttings. Now, if you've seen my previous work with cuttings, you probably know that it was very particular and a little bit fussy. And I heard that, um, and I felt that, to be honest. Like, I don't want something that is going to be like, wrap each branch and blah, blah, blah. Now, if I'm doing a lot of like very specific varieties, maybe, but for this purpose, and especially for the purpose of propagating native plants and shrubs, I'd much rather have a very easy, very streamlined process. So that's what we're gonna get in today. And I'm going to move a few things around, and I'm going to grab a Ziploc bag because I need one, and you'll see why here in a second. So I went and visited a friend, a new friend I met on Instagram up in Knoxville uh, last weekend and got a bunch of cuttings from them because that's part of what they do is native plant propagation. And so I really try to reach out and support Anyone who's doing the good, good work of making sure that our ecosystems are well supported. And those have all been sitting in bags for like, I don't know, four days, five days. So I'm trying to not lose these plant materials that they so graciously shared with me. And they're all in just like bags um, with a little bit of potting soil in a Ziploc to keep them nice and moist and keep them from drying out. Now, like I said before, the whole cutting situation with the wrapping and taking off domes and all of this, like it just, it seemed like it was a little much for some of you. And so I've streamlined this process. One of the things that I did when I was moving from California to Tennessee was take some cuttings from a friend back in California because I really liked the figs that she was growing and I really, admired the elderberry that she was growing. Now, when you're moving, you don't have space for like 50,000 cups. And so I took like two or three really long branch cuttings of first year growth and a little bit of second year growth just to play with it. And then I cut those down into smaller lengths where there was a couple of buds on each cutting above and below the soil line so that it could develop roots and then develop leaves on top. Now I stripped all the foliage off because that really just um, helps the plant or helps the plant material to dehydrate a little. It does better if there's not leaves on. We're focusing on root growth right now. But then this is where this got fun. I'm not sure if these are, yeah. Because I got one gallon containers because I had to fit everything into my tiny little Volkswagen. And I got these one gallon containers. I'm going to grab, oh, it's right there. <laughs> A little bit of sand because sometimes I have issues with fungus gnats. No! There's sand all over my floor now. Okay. <laughs> That's a thing. So, this is why we work with a tray. Now, I want to hydrate. I should have hydrated the sand first, to be honest, because it's just going to. See? This is the messy part inside. I'm trying to not be that person about the sand under my feet right now, but man, it is like a beach in my kitchen. Let's hydrate the sand in the pot. This doesn't have huge holes. In the bottom. There we go. Sand is a lot easier to work with when it's wet. It won't run out the bottom as easily. So anyway, the thought being that if you have a base layer of sand and top layer of sand, then fungus gnats trying to crawl in or out, um, basically like it scratches them to death, more or less. So they can't get to your roots and eat them. And these roots are going to be very small and developing. So we want to avoid that. Now I'm going to get 
this container of the Pearl Mix that we already hydrated in the first half of this segment. And I'm just going to throw this Pearl Mix down in there and fill the pot more or less to the top. You can kind of see where the line was last time. Um, it's right along the lip of this container. And I want to leave that last inch so that I can do like a quarter inch to half inch of sand on top to keep my little gnats out of there. Because I somehow always have fungus gnats bouncing around. But it's okay, we will live with them and figure it out. So we got a couple of different things here. But one of the things I did when I was driving across country because I can only fit so many containers of plants in my car, and because you can't put live plants in a U-Haul box, is rather than having individual things of cuttings, I took gallon pots, and I'd stick between like 10 and 15 cuttings in that pot. And what happens here, and I'm just going to, like, no rooting hormone, nothing. I'm just going to stick these guys. The fat ones I might do outside. Let's set those to the side. But I'm going to stick these guys down in there, Here's the important part is which way is up and down. Hopefully you can see this, but basically a lot of cuttings will have a bud that faces up. Like it's very, it's a very small amount of upward facing. You can kind of see that one maybe. Um, but so yeah, there's a bud and it either faces up or down. Just look at it. And like, if it looks like it's pointing up, then that's probably the upside of the stick. There are very few uh, exceptions to that rule. And so I'm just going to do actually a lot of little ones in here. And you'll notice I'm pushing them down to where at least like two or three buds are covered. That's just so it can develop roots. It can always grow more on the top. What we're focused on right now is it rooting. This is black willow. And so black willow is really great to stake like uh, erosion spaces. Like if you have a spot like a stream bank, like I do, um, that is prone to erosion, and you don't want the water to take all of that soil away, then you can use plants like black willow. You could actually take like fatter cuttings like this and stake them just along the bank. But because I'm looking for a much higher success rate and I have a lot of very small cuttings which need just a little more coddling along, um, those are all gonna go in this little pot. And I'm really just gonna fill this up and get like a solid amount of cuttings put all around this pot. And we'll do a bunch of the little ones all in the same one. Now you could do these in like individual pots if you really wanted to, but I haven't found a good reason to do that. I do think that there is something to be said about the uh, roots forming on like one cutting and it's signaling, there's like a chemical signal in that same soil medium to the other cuttings to form roots. Now there's probably a little bit more to it than that, but I've kind of observed that when you have more of one variety in the same container, and this is true for some plants that are hard to start from seed actually need like rotting varieties of the same seed that are not going to sprout in that area to provide the chemical hormone signals um, or even the actual chemicals that they need in order to effectively sprout. And so if you only have like one thing in a container, then it might not be receiving all of the signals that it needs, more or less. Uh, we could get deeper into that, but I think that's probably the best plain language uh, explanation of it is just like put a lot in the same container and then the odds seem to increase of those things working out. So these guys are all stabbed in here. This is pretty full. This is a gallon container, which is why I grabbed the gallon Ziploc. Before I put the Ziploc on top, I'm going to get, it actually is the dry sand now. It is still all over my kitchen floor. It's really hard sometimes being a tidy person and also being a gardener and also gardening inside the house because those Things don't always mesh very well, but that's what brooms are for. And I'm just going to give it a nice, uh, pretty even layer of sand here on the top. And I'm not worried about moisture or anything else here on the top because all of the moisture that we need is in this container in between the sand layers. 
it is going to retain that moisture a little better because of the sand layers and because this gallon Ziploc is going right over the top. We want it to be open. That will also help it retain moisture. And then these guys, now you have a couple options from here. If you have space on your heat map, if you have a very large heat map um, and you have space for pots, then you can put these pots uh, probably in, you know, just like a tray of some sort. But if you don't have a tray, you could just put the pot and that may help to stimulate root growth. Another thing that I do with them is I'll put them just on like a bottom bookshelf in my room or someplace that's like a little more dark, but has a decent amount of heat. And then just, I don't know, I water them every so often. It's like maybe once a week, maybe every two weeks. It really depends on the amount of humidity in your house or in the space that they're growing. But this is how I did, yeah, I did like 10 figs in a pot. I did like 10 elderberries in a pot. And as you can see, these guys are doing really well. And I've since separated them out into their own pots. At some point, you're going to see roots start coming through those bottom corners. And that's kind of more or less an indicator that they're ready to be separated out and either planted out or um, put into pots if you can't plant them out yet because it's too cold. So that's uh, those guys. I'm going to do that with this black willow. I'm also going to do some false indigo. It's a really great nitrogen fixing plant that's native to this area. And one of the things we're going to be getting into a little bit more this season is working in more native plants into our gardens and into our yards because I think it's really important for us to actually be a part of our ecology and in order to be a part of our ecology we do have to support um or we should want to support really like all of everything in that ecosystem that depends on very specific native plants for food for shelter um for you know pollen nectar food shelter it's all of it right so the goal is to move towards having more native plants in our gardens, as well as the things that we like to grow for ourselves and try to find sort of like a balance with the wildlife that surrounds us. Because if they have the foods and the shelter that they want, then the odds of them eating what's in your garden go way down. So there's that. Um, I really just wanted to show you this little like it's streamlined, right? It's so much less work than the previous propagation video. And I'm not saying that that method is a bad way to do it because I still do it that way sometimes. But if you're doing a lot of something, a lot of native plants, if you have taken cuttings and you're just like, I want to do these and I'm nervous that they're going to die, do a lot of them in the same container. Your odds of success are a lot higher, um, definitely more in your favor. And worst case scenario, you get like one or two really great plants, but it's on a gallon footprint. So it's, I think, worth it. Um, if you're wondering what else is here, I've got a little bit of black currant that I'm going to do that way. And then the rest of these are, uh, what are they called? I want to call them fartichokes and that's not right. <laughs> Jerusalem artichokes or there's another like sunflowery name for them, but those are just going to go in little pots of soil as well. I'm trying to think if there's any other cuttings I have kicking around here to show you, but not right this second. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you like what you see, please hit that like, subscribe button, all of the stuff that I'm you know, supposed to tell you. And follow me on Instagram at Flavor Kit. I do basically almost daily updates there um, in stories. We're always talking about what's going on. That's where I kind of get a feel for what sort of support you guys need. Um, yeah. And until next time, happy gardening. Okay, bye. Oh, so sandy.